All right, people, let's, let's get started. Uh, last round, uh, uh, last substantive session uh, for this morning. If you could take your seats, please. Thank you so much. Please come in. Excellent. So, are we ready to start? Yes? Are we ready? Yes, we're ready. Cool. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. So, here is a suggestion. Obviously, we have a lot of thoughts. I'm sure you had as active uh, conversations and many ideas and suggestions and proposals in your cluster meeting as I had in, in my cluster meeting. Um, we will not go through all these ideas. That's the very reason why we asked you to submit these ideas via email so that we can uh, cluster them, that we can share it back with you. So we won't do that right now. What I would like to propose though is that we do two things. And let me just introduce it as, as a process suggestion. The first one is we go around the room and we'll hear from the rapporteurs, including KS, right? You ready? Um, what are low-hanging low fruit ideas? Things we could do pretty much immediately that would help to advance the AI and inclusion agenda broadly defined. Things that are small, things that are big, importantly, low-hanging fruits. Things we can do individually as an organization, collectively, just within the next few days. Start doing stuff. What's in this category? So that's suggestion one. Filter number one. Filter number two is what would be possible candidates, ideas and suggestions that have emerged in your conversations? That could be the starting point for some sort of informal communities of practice among us. You could call it working group, but I, I prefer the term um, community of practice that could run in a light touch way over the network of centers platform. So in, to give a few examples, some of us are actually teaching. We create syllabi on AI and society courses. Could we create the community of practice and start sharing our syllabi? and learn from each other, and maybe even make them available in different languages. That could be a community of practice. Some of us are working hard to translate reports and research insights and make them accessible to broader audiences, including policymakers and journalists. Could we form a community of practice among those of us who engage in these sorts of efforts to say, hey, how can we be more strategic um, working together and informing each other uh, how we do these sorts of translations, how we, for instance, raise awareness among journalists and reporters who write about AI and so that they don't go out and necessarily write the killer robot headlines in the future. Or there may be some among us, and we've heard Mark uh, with his presentation, working on data cooperatives and related ideas. Could we form a community of practice around that? And the idea would not so much be that the community of practice has to do all the heavy lifting, but it could actually just create interfaces to other networks that are already working on similar issues. There was a very active Twitter street about uh, some of the open data synergies that we could create. So anyway, I'm just throwing these examples out to give the rapporteurs a sense for what kind of um, nominations we, we, we would look for, um, but of course please also feel free to push back on this idea if you don't like it. Uh, it's just a, a working hypothesis that um, we may form such communities uh, uh, and would have something light touch that would survive uh, this symposium in addition of course to all the reports we'll produce. So. You are invited either to comment on the low-hanging fruit or on this um, nominations for communities of practice. Uh, you can also criticize the whole thing, but uh, if you keep that as a working structure. So, KS, since you said you're ready, and I, I, I heard you had an amazing dance performance last night, 
Uh, so, yeah, chaos. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to dance here. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, this is a, a little bit difficult for me because uh, uh, we talked about low-hanging fruits. Uh, so we were a group of four or five people, and we have five low-hanging fruits, and uh, I have to choose one of them. And uh, yeah, uh, so uh, um, okay. Well, if I can mention them, then uh, I mean, I'll if I have to choose, I'll have to choose mine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so instead of doing that, I'm going to talk about uh, just a, a few of them. Uh, so. Um, Marquera from the Canadian, uh, Marquera talked about uh, Canadian government's uh, ongoing projects already. Uh, they are vetting AI with respect to uh, UDHR, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and also they are investigating um, the use of sex bots uh, to spread uh, misogynistic messages to simulate rape. Uh, and then they're going to start funding. Uh, violence against women, violence against uh, children projects uh, to investigate how to abate, how to abate AI to uh, fight back. Uh, and also, uh, if there is a good project, they may fund a project uh, investigating, uh, instead of abating AI, using AI to uh, fight back as well. And Ernest, Okay. Yeah, that's about the right length because we have All right. 60 okay. working groups. So. I see. Okay. Well, that's, uh, and, and then, okay, I, I'll be very short then. Uh, Ernest talked about, uh, you know, custom making uh, inclusion projects for different types of uh, AI projects. Carlos already began ethical education of uh, uh, kids between 14 and 16. Uh, this is a very interesting project. Uh, he uh, put children out there interviewing, for instance, janitors and talk about how AI can be used to make their lives and jobs easier. Uh, and then the students will come back and imagine, formulate an AI project that meets, that, uh, uh, that solve, resolves the uh, wishes of uh, the janitors and other uh, uh, low-income uh, working people. Okay, well, I'm out of time, so I'm not going to talk about my project. Uh, hopefully, I'll get a chance later. Ma Thank ma you. Mention it. Mention it briefly. Well, uh, I mean, I, I'll have to repeat myself. I think that uh, to make sure to abate the polarizing effects of AI between haves and have-nots, uh, we really have to talk about how to equalize the ownership and use of uh, big data. I mean, AI is just a software. It can be copied. Uh, a lot of people can have access to it. What's more important is making the data available more equally between different people. So two low-hanging fruits. One, research on data protection law and check whether it is hampering or helping equality because data protection law is supposed to be an uh, equality project, equality initiative, but is it really helping equality? And second is a, 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 a quick research on open data movement because uh, the government holds a lot of data, sensitive and very useful data for AI. And what the government, what the governments around the world do, what the governments around the world do with that data that data have will have uh, enormous consequences on whether AI will be really inclusive, will be really equal for all people. Thank you. Thank you, KS. And obviously, we also immediately get back to the definitional questions. What are low-hanging fruit? You know, this sounds like a multi-year effort already to me, but great. Okay, who else wants to, wants to report back? So I'm being so willing to go first, just so that the one point I've picked is in said before I stand up. Um, but uh, so in our group, we were discussing that Forums like these are sort of like preaching to the converted. So just thinking about how we can disseminate this information to um, other practitioners in our different situations and contexts. And one thing we are suggesting is that we each go back to our um, wherever we are from and have seminars so that we can just tell other people about things like these. And 
in addition to that, we're going to create a repository and just put over there materials which can be used to drive these uh, seminars, share links to uh, pre presentations, articles, papers, and also try to have this material in different languages so that language barrier is not a thing. Everybody needs to know about these kinds of things. So yeah, thank you. Hello. Oh, sorry. My name is Tobias Mala. I'm a law professor at the University of Oslo. And we had two low-hanging fruits. One was a list of ongoing research projects um, to d inform other people. And the list, I think, should be open to others, but limited to a circle here within the NOC um, in terms of who is included there, because otherwise it can get uh, difficult to manage, at least initially. And the second would be uh, very similar here, um, some kind of reading list or multiple reading lists that could be heavily curated to and focused. So one could be on law and governance issues and um, that would be an alternative to some kind of edited volume which takes many years to create where one could say, okay, in the reading list there is a gap. Can you write an article, publish it somewhere and we'll put a list in, a link in here. So something yeah, easier than an edited volume, but the same function. Thank you. Thank you very much. Melanie. Thank you. I'm incredibly excited both to report uh, back on the amazing low-hanging fruits and community of practices we already identified in our group and also to, to hear uh, the other group uh, reporting because it's really overlapping and uh, there I can already see collaborations and joint activities between, uh, between the groups. Um, so the first low hanging uh, fruit which uh, we, we defined, it's, it's a kind of an umbrella which Stefan said that uh, could be done in, uh, in two hours. So listen, that would be a, a common interdisciplinary methodology to assess risks and uh, opportunities of not only AI, but emerging technologies in, um, in general. So that whenever there's a new buzzword, we have to react very quickly. Uh, we don't need to, to, uh, to reinvent, uh, to reinvent uh, the wheel. And um, second, low-hanging fruit, it's ac actually identifying uh, what you call the communities of uh, practices, uh, which we call the existing platforms and the collective intelligence we can, uh, we can tap uh, into. And we already have three very concrete projects uh, with identified leaders and uh, we can uh, start uh, developing them tomorrow. Do you want to know more? Yes. yes? <laughs> Uh, so first, uh, we need to, to target the international uh, framework and, uh, and policy making. We don't need to create a new uh, IGF, we just need to go uh, to uh, the relevant uh, UN agencies who are dealing with human rights, uh, humanitarian and uh, development uh, goals and bring our evidence on uh, on AI and be present so that Sofia is not the only one talking to Antonio uh, Gutierrez and that we are also able to shape uh, to shape uh, the uh, narrative and bring uh, evidence uh, based uh, policy proposal. Second exercise, uh, it's a comparative law mapping exercise and. So I think we'll have volunteers from uh, other groups. In the same way, it was, um, it was done for exceptions and limitations for librarians uh, by, uh, by existing uh, communities. Just identify quickly the legal obstacles and uh, solutions uh, to the principles which we identified, which are fairness, accountability, transparency, in existing national and regional laws dealing with uh, human rights, liability, access, um, etc. And also map successful experiences of uh, good 
projects related to, uh, to AI. And last but, uh, but not least, uh, the, which coalition uh, could we revive and, and transform in order to define our alternative, copyleft-like uh, vision of, uh, of AI. Uh, well, the platform was elaborated already uh, this uh, morning uh, during, uh, during breakfast. I, I can't see Alex, but uh, yes, you're the identified uh, leader and uh, the name of the platform so which you, you, you devised is uh, Open AI. So it's the most exciting project to me personally, and uh, I hope uh, everybody is going to get uh, involved. So the idea is to, I'm almost done, no. revive. No, you don't understand, we have to stop. Okay, Thank revive so. CC, Comunia, and follow up the bottom up governance principles of uh, open air. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. <laughs> no, no, thank you. <laughs> Stephanie. Hi, thank you. Yeah, so our, I, we didn't talk that much about low-hanging fruits, but we talked about um, making AI interactions visible for, 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 for humans and about knowledge creation and awareness raising in different contexts. So one of our concrete ideas was to for each of us to go back into our respective uh, communities and environments and to organize events under the headlines of AI for X and to have discussions and like, get feedback from people in our, in our context around what expectations or hopes or fears that they would have around AI. Because we've talked about the different ways people talk in the different discourses around AI in our different contexts, whether it's more enthusiastic or more fearsome. So it would be an interesting way to go back and raise awareness about the topic and the potentials, but also then feed back into maybe the network of centers. What are the results of this discussion? And and you would you say that could be a community of practice or a working group in an informal way? Would that yeah. fit that model or process Maybe, potentially? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So that was one. That was one of the ideas we had. Um, and then the next one was about having, because we talked about the different terminologies that are there, and also especially when you come and work in a multi-stakeholder environment, we have very different understandings of what AI is. And even here, we realize that very often we talk about machine learning and we talk about AI, and they're very different things sometimes. So we thought about some sort of living lexicon where people can, we don't try to determine what what is, but people can add their own different understandings and and meanings what it is. And it's one of the things that I think academics are good at doing, right? Unpacking the different meanings and it can be an output in itself also. Um, so maybe we stop there. These are all great suggestions. Again, we will we will collect more of them, but just that we get more voices. This could be maybe a project together with Wikimedia, Wikimedia or Wikipedia, right? So it's an interesting thought to, to elaborate. Do you have one last quick yeah, point you want to make? You seem like one. not to want to let go of the mic. So. Uh, no, no, no. It's about um, visualizing AI in everyday life. So like to come up with a similar, I don't know, like plugins or browsers that visualize how and where you've interacted with AIs and how they've shaped the information and things that you're accessing. Excellent. Thank you, Pranish. Uh, I'll be quite brief. So in our group, we spoke not as much about low-hanging fruits uh, as in general, but rather what uh, individuals were going to take back and, uh, and do uh, following on. One was uh, to change uh, the conceptualization of, of existing research projects which they've already undertaken, to add uh, new methodologies to make the research more interdisciplinary since this conference uh, shows the need for that. Uh, and uh, another was to uh, actually go and uh, create a new, uh, a, a new kind of organization uh, for creating new data sets um, so, uh, digitizing books in this case, since the person was a linguist, uh, and collaboration with Wikime Wikimedia Foundation came up here as well, and, and funding is needed for things like that, and once new data sets are available, uh, there is less uh, chance of uh, larger companies involved in this saying, we don't have good data to, to work 
on. Um, and, and that's one way of building inclusion. Uh, another, uh, another was to, uh, for a person from the public prosecutor's office here, ensuring that the algorithms uh, and the AI that's being developed is actually public in terms of all the code, in terms of all the uh, facilities that, that people can examine it. And lastly, uh, for a, a statistician uh, saying that uh, who has learned a lot about bias, um, and, and uh, unconscious biases that creep in, which he hadn't r realized earlier, to share these learnings with uh, in his peer group, and uh, and and that's not something that needs new structures or or but uh, or anything, but needs uh, plugging into in uh, like in terms of uh, existing seminar uh, sessions that happen and and new perspectives being this essentially spreading organically through those. Thank you. Wonderful suggestions. I have like five ideas that I could immediately plug into what you what you just said. I won't do that right now, but I will do it uh, later. Up there is a yeah. Hi. Uh, reporting back for the turtles, and um, <laughs> I can I can tie I can tie uh, that into what, a lot of what has already been said. Um, there were uh, many suggestions in our group that people wanted to include um, these topics uh, of AI and inclusion in their cur uh, curricula because they are working as researchers and teachers in uh, different organizations. So I think what's uh, important here is what we already talked about, reading lists and uh, resources. And also uh, Shaz, who's sitting here next to me, said that we need to convey this in a way that my dad can understand it, which, you know, I'm a journalist by profession, know that this is not a low-hanging fruit, but... <laughs> Uh, for that, we also we also need uh, case studies, and um, the, these case studies I think are really important, and they should be included in any kind of uh, reading list or um, you know um, information exchange that um, we are thinking about here as a group. Excellent, thank you. Let's take about three more report backs uh, just to get a flavor of, of the, the richness of, of suggestions. John Merley. There really wasn't a whole lot here that people haven't already identified. We um, had a number of things that Melanie brought up, uh, such as um, the copy left ideas um, and working on IP across different contexts. Um, we're also, um, we also talked a lot about bridging conversation with industry, bringing industry further into this conversation. Um, it was not part of this this um, symposium specifically as much, but um, it's a critical next step. Um, transparency also is a, a really big part of our conversation, and um, again, with a, a nod to Wikimedia, um, with an idea toward uh, open auditing and um, thinking about how transparency is limiting and who holds the power. Um, these were the main points that we talked about. Not sure how low any of that is, except that some of the work has already been doing, been done. Thank you, John. The solution we come up with is that we have to treat bias as an, an accuracy. And as engineers care, uh, care for accuracy, if we treat bias as something that is inaccurate and that's going to be eradicated from algorithms, algorithms we are making them to care. And our third suggestion, that's going to be very, very quick, Yes, and for the, sorry, we have two groups of animals in one, so we have like a dub, double mini time. So um, the third suggestion had to do with uh, coming up with a kind of mechanism that would uh, improve, uh, encourage the openness and inclusion of uh, the design of AI in different stages. So the first stage would be this one, awareness, for instance, having this kind of like an Hippocratic no, uh, uh, oath. Uh, uh, we call it the Turing oath because we just switched the scientists for a more accurate one. Um, you know, for, for uh, engineers and the people designing the algorithms and rep responsible for them to be uh, more aware about that. So we also have the idea of positive reinforcement, like giving some kind of badges and certification authorities, giving certification of ac accuracy or, or good quality of algorithms in, and inclusion. And the third one is a negative uh, reinforcement thing that had to do with the response of the state, uh, with data protection law, with consumer law, etc. So we think that only having these cross-sectional responses and uh, stimulus, uh, we are going to have a, 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 an efficient way of, of opening up uh, AI and making it more inclusive. Thank you so much. Uh, that, that's it. Sorry, sorry, we have to move on. Thank you. Thank you. Applause, though. Great ideas. Okay, uh, so reporting here for the zebras. Uh, a zebra in, in, in Brazil uh, is something that uh, is unexpected. We say, deu zebra. 
the zebra, it means something unexpected happened. But uh, here, there, there is not uh, nothing that uh, really is unexpected by the end of, uh, of a set of uh, initiatives already uh, uh, being planned. But our group, uh, we didn't have so much of a low-hanging fruit, uh, but perhaps a, a fruit that is so big that we cannot ignore, uh, which is uh, 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 some colleagues are doing already work on, on education, MOOCs, a lot of this uh, came up. But one issue was that uh, in a, in a conf even in a conference like this, which is focused on, on uh, AI and, and inclusion. A lot of our references, a lot of our examples come uh, from uh, uh, dominant Western players, right? Uh, so perhaps uh, engage in a, in a deeper mapping uh, exercise, an exercise of mapping and engagement, understanding what is going on, for instance, in Asia, in China, who are the big players, what are their initiatives, uh, uh, but also not only the, the dominant players, uh, also what is going on uh, in, in other continents, social movements in Africa, and how we can uh, uh, engage that. Uh, and in this regard, also trying to engage uh, uh, the industry. Uh, normally, what uh, uh, the, the groups within uh, companies like IBM or Google or, or Tencent that will be engaged uh, uh, with uh, AI issues, with ethical issues, is normally a small group, right? Uh, so, how we can do that? And perhaps in this uh, in this sense, uh, uh, engage a forum. Uh, uh, like uh, conferences where AI people go to, uh, and one particular conference that came up was the NIPS conference, which is the Neuro Informa Information Processing Systems uh, uh, conference, uh, which is, seems to be the, the big AI event. Uh, so try to engage more uh, the industry in these different uh, contexts. Excellent, thank you, thank you so much. Two more comments, please. Okay, I'll be uh, quick as well. I'm Jacques Ludic. I'm representing the Rhinos. Um, very quick, um, if, I think what we said is that if we can turn this symposium and this event, which is fantastic, diverse and everything, if we can turn this into a collaboration platform that we can plug into other platforms, that will be awesome. Um, and uh, for instance, I've got a, a Machine Intelligence Institute of Africa, um, and we, I'm going to plug in this type of thing there for, for sure. Um, and then the other thing is we talked about industry as well. Um, I think it's very important to, to plug into the partnership on AI. We've well, got all the major tech players there as well. And if we build a strong collaboration platform that plugs into that, plugs into other platforms, we can influence the world. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, this is Andrea reporting for the Foxes. Uh, after lots of discussions, we have came up with three action points. So the first one is to create strong communities, keeping in mind that countries and communities are starting from different places and assumptions. The second one is to map inclusion. Uh, so who isn't here? Who have we missed? And the third one is to process everything that happened. And the first action point uh, related to creating strong communities, we had uh, many different problems arising from different uh, places. So we had the situation in Iran brought by Sadigi. Uh, she said the most technologies are brought from outside Iran. So how can we raise the concern about these technologies? Here in Brazil, IBM is concerned with the fact that um, girls are not really interested in tech and coding careers. We also had the case brought by Philip from Germany from top-down areas versus bottom-up. He believes that uh, these discussions should be uh, brought in front of the government. And we also have some cases from Maja in Slovenia and Alex in Africa and also Wolfgang in Germany, which I don't have the time to talk right now, so sorry. And, um, and the second action point, which is to map inclusion. We want to know what is missing and what are the successes so far in this inclusion. It was noted that there aren't really many people from China here in this, in this symposium. And that's probably a, you know, a problem. And the third one, which is to process everything that happened. We believe that we need to, uh, you know, after all the things that we've learned from this conference, to take this, you know, processing moment and think about other things that we have learned here. The last one in the zoo. So reporting back from the YAGS with three super quick low-hanging fruits. First is choosing a hashtag that we could all use when we publish information about this so it's easy to track what everyone is doing. Uh, the second one is creating a mailing list or a LinkedIn group in which we can 
all communicate. And, and the third one uh, that we think is key is that we should, uh, now that the conversation was sparked in this event, uh, replicate some of these events at the local level so that we bring this agenda back to our home countries and start the conversations there. Thank you so much. It's been awesome. Thank you. So what we will do, uh, as you know, uh, this afternoon there is a network of centers meeting to which actually everybody is invited. Um, I also understand for those who are not part of the network, if you prefer to go to the beach, honestly. Uh, but uh, should you be interested in joining, please join us this afternoon. Um, so what we will do is um, we will take a closer look at the, the notes that you've submitted and of course also the notes taken during this feedback round and see which of the proposals that have come up, where can the network be helpful and support uh, some of these initiatives, uh, where can we connect just based on the networks we have, some of the proposals to other communities, we mentioned Wikimedia uh, a number of times and many others. Uh, so we will, we will work on these proposals and get back to you over the list. We also have a network of centers email list that may actually be a, a, a starting point uh, so that we may not have to create the new one immediately. So we will follow up with a number of specific ideas um, how to turn uh, the, these wonderful kaleidoscopic suggestions uh, in, into an action plan or a roadmap that we can work on collectively. But again, thank you so much. Uh, before I turn over to Carlos, um, we wanted to show you uh, the outcomes of our creative exercise from yesterday, the flip books. Uh, and Tiago, thank you so much for your extremely hard work. Big applause, thank you. It's Creative Commons, share alike, non-commercial. Amazing. Thank you, guys.
Guys, that's amazing. Such a wonderful and inspirational video. Uh, so before we conclude, uh, we have a quick activity uh, for you, of course. This uh, action-packed event. So you guys are receiving a final gift uh, from our event. Uh, nobody lives empty-handed. So you're receiving postcards from Rio. Uh, very different ones. Some with the sugar loaf, some with the Christ the Redeemer, some with the Museum of Tomorrow. So if you want to, and it's not mandatory, of course, uh, but if you want to, could you leave us a testimonial about what you learned in this in these event, if you like it or not? Just a quick, like a Twitter length uh, testimonial of this postcard from Rio, that will be really, really helpful uh, for us to prepare future events, prepare future initiatives, and have this as a memento for, for those three days that we end up spending here in, in Rio. I hope you have a pen with you. Uh, but we have two baskets located on the side of the, of the auditorium. So uh, when we finish uh, this, this final session, and when you leave the auditorium, leave your postcard there, and we will make sure we will send it to the interest parties that needs to hear about it, and to make sure that this workshop, this uh, seminar, might be turned into something bigger than that even a platform, someone said. Uh, so you guys are receiving your postcard. Feel free to pick one that you like. If you don't like the photo that you have, there's a plenty of other options. So yeah, choice is included. So uh, as we transition to this uh, last and very quick session, uh, we want to say a couple of uh, thank yous. Uh, there are much, much needed after those, after those three days. If you don't get your postcard already, uh, we have a couple of more there. So just make sure that you, that you pick it up. Uh, so, Urs, do you want to say a quick uh, few words of, um, of thank yous before we, we conclude? Or? If possible, if I may suggest that the ITS yep. Rio and Berkman Klein team gets on stage for a big applause. You guys are amazing. We want to see you. Yes. Come, all team, assemble, please. Come on, guys, don't be shy. Get on stage. Here's the team. Is the stage big enough for all of us? Thank you guys, thank you so much. Uh, clearly, we have critical mass for a soccer match uh, afterwards. No, thank you, uh, you've been amazing. ITS Rio, uh, very, very grateful for this collaboration. It's been an intense couple of months, uh, fun three days to be continued this afternoon. Um, and let me just say one thing. Um, of course, we, we talked about really important issues here. Um, but perhaps even more important or equally important is how we uh, have talked about the issues. So um, going back to what Carlos mentioned in his opening remarks, um, I think we have created the spirit of Rio um, in, a, in a very nasty world where we are uh, opening our virtual newspapers and turn on uh, TV and, and are showered with really depressing news and and see so much hate and see so much uh, negative ways uh, of you know, fighting each other and going against each other. I, I think this spirit of Rio is in sharp contrast to that and gives me personally a lot of hope that actually we can come together 
from all over the world, over 40 countries represented here, that we um, have the power uh, and, and the spirit to actually uh, uh, engage on hard problems in, in the spirit of friendship uh, and mutual respect. So very personal thanks uh, to the team who has enabled that, but also to all of you who have helped to co-create and peer produce uh, this event. So thank you. Thank you again very much. So, guys, thanks everyone. Uh, this has been a, a super, super event for, for all of us. So, just a couple of logistical uh, announcements. So, this is not the end. Uh, so, we are, we are breaking for lunch. And as Urs has mentioned, uh, the next session is NOC meeting. So what can we expect for the NOC meeting of this, uh, of this afternoon? Since uh, a couple of you, probably this could be the very first NOC uh, event or meeting that you attend, uh, we're going to do a quick recap of, uh, we're finishing already, uh, a quick recap of the, of the NOC about the history and previous uh, uh, activities and research projects. Uh, talking a little bit about the hubs, and then transition to an explanation about two very important documents. First one is the roadmap. That's the guiding uh, uh, charter for principles, uh, for research topics, uh, methodology and activities for two years. So we are almost finishing this first year uh, of ITS being the coordinator uh, of, the, of the NOC. And I think it's a good opportunity for us to see how we fare and how we stand uh, in connection to our roadmap for those two years. And then we're talking about, uh, as well, about the yearly update, which is the survey that some of you end up answering in the beginning of the year. So it's gonna be good for us to take a look on a broad picture of how the NOC looks like uh, having the answers off the yearly, the yearly update. And after we finish that, we are going to talk about future collaborations and about the role of NOC in the discussion on AI and inclusion. So this very last segment has a segue to the final chunk of our discussion in, in the afternoon. And guys, uh, this is just me being uh, talking about logistical and practical issues. Um, is there anything else? Uh, Sandra, do you want to go ahead? Well, how are you? Fine. <laughs> Hope you're not that tired as me. Thank you for everything to all the, the team. Well, uh, while we are going to have lunch here with Lionel and with Sandra, we are going to, to be in the, in the observatory talking about Conectados al Sur and all the job we are making with youth and AI and technology. So uh, the one who want to, to join us just come to the observatory. Okay, no, just wanted to say that we are not uh, making you work more. I promise it's totally informal. And as we are organizing this new symposium in Costa Rica uh, this January, um, I think it's a great chance for those of you who want to keep working, uh, focusing on youth and AI, to come to Costa Rica, visit another wonderful country, and having fun with us as well. So we meet at the observatory, and if you want, you can bring your food, and we're just going to have a chat. Thank you. Thanks, guys. And let me just conclude saying, for those of you who might have a want to switch temperature from Rio to Geneva, there is a workshop on day one of IGF that is conventionally called AI and Inclusion which is the NOC workshop on day one of IGF to continue this conversation. So if you have plans to go to Geneva, 
I bet the weather is going to be as good as it is outside today. Uh, we have this workshop planned for day one of activities on IGF. So please do come by. It will be great for us to continue to continue this conversation. Guys, so this is the end uh, of this uh, morning session. Thanks again uh, very much to the Museum of Tomorrow for hosting us. What a great venue was it. Come on. It was really, really great. And, well, uh, it will be odd for me to thank the ITS team since we are almost a family and see each other every day. But, guys, thanks again. Uh, you did an awesome job. Uh, how, how great is to be able to work with you every day and to make this beautiful event possible. So, a round of applause for ITS team, guys. And finally, I think a really large round of applause is, is needed for those guys who are in the front front of research and activities on issues on internet and society. So the guys from the Berkman Klein Center, we couldn't be more happy to work with you in, in this event. It's going to be a pleasure. It was a pleasure for us. We learned a lot uh, from you guys on organizing this event. So thank you, thank you very much for this partnership. It was incredible. And of course, we want to continue with this partnership for other events and other activities. So guys, a round of applause for Berkman Klein Center team.